<laughs> hey, I think we're live. All right, hey okay, guys. Um, happy Friday. It is uh, technically the first full day of spring. Um, and I know that there's a lot of tree pollen out there, so if anyone has some allergies like I do, we, we've been feeling it. Um, so welcome to Slow Flow. I do want to say, I do recommend uh, blacks if you have them. And I wanted to show today, if you don't have blacks, you can use things around the house. I'm going to use our, bar, our jars, our jars of black beans and uh, chickpeas today. And they're really just to bring the floor up to me when I'm going to be uh, in forward folds and things. So know that you can just use stuff around the house. I'm also sitting on a blanket here. Um, I also want to mention that it's for you to remember that this is your practice. So do what feels right in your body. And uh, we are here on Friday, like I mentioned, and Friday is ruled by Venus. And Venus is all about love and about sensuality and about feeling. So thinking about that today, maybe go with the flow of what feels right in your body, what sensations feel right in your body, and just move it in that way. But we're gonna get started in a seat and um, we'll take a moment once you get settled into your seat to feel your sit bones ground. So whatever you're sitting on the floor or a prop or a blanket like I am, take a moment to bring awareness to the sit bones and allow them maybe to sink a little. And then we'll come up to, I like to talk about the swirly part of your hair at the crown of your head, that lifting toward the ceiling. So it may feel like a gentle tuck of the chin. And then from this long spine, if you wanna let your eyes close or your gaze relax down, and start to settle into the shape of a long spine. What I'd like to offer you this morning is a gentle tap of your breastbone using the fingertips of the right hand. So it's just a gentle tap to start, nice and slow. This is a yin yoga practice. It's using the thought behind this is that it's stimulating the thymus, which is a gland associated with our immunity. So as you lightly tap the breastbone, again, maybe you're staying in one spot or moving up and down. Maybe you envision your immunity getting stronger, knowing that lymph system moves like our circulatory system. Maybe even envisioning as you tap a little extra oomph of immunity pulsing through your body. And as we tap, we might start to notice sensations happening in the fingertips and around the breastbone. Maybe allow your awareness to settle there. Knowing that this type of focus brings us right to the present moment. Settles us here in our body. Maybe for these last few moments, your tapping gets a little faster, maybe a little deeper. And then when it feels complete for you, what I like to do is just take my right hand and place it right on my breastbone, right where I was tapping, and then left hand on top of the right. Knowing that our arms, our hands, our fingers are extensions of our heart. So we're closing the circuit. Pause and here for a moment. Enter the bowl of vastness that is the heart. Listen to the song that is always resonating. Give yourself to it with total abandon. Quiet ecstasy is here, and a steady, regal sense of resting in a perfect spot. You who are the embodiment of blessing, 
Once you know the way, the nature of attention will call you to return again and again, answer the call and be saturated with knowing. I belong here. I am home. And when you're ready, the eyes are closed, let them flutter open gently. Begin to release your hands and just start to find some movement, maybe through fingertips to start. A little wiggle. If you've been to my classes, you know I like to spirit finger or a couple of heart fireworks sometimes. Then we'll start to move this movement toward the wrists, so a couple of circles through wrists. And then maybe the movements expand toward the elbows, just find a couple of rotations through the elbows. Helms our Arsenal Hall. And then allow this movement to come up toward the shoulders. So that could be lifting shoulders up to the ears and rolling them down and back. Again, what feels right in your body is it's going to be the theme for today. It might be both shoulders at the same time or maybe one at a time. Maybe it feels better for you to go forward. Just we need to move the upper body in a way that feels really nice. All of that feels complete. We will come back to our seat and our long spine. Take a moment to feel sit bones ground. That's really part of your head lift. And we'll come to some side stretches. Extending your left arm toward the ground, maybe out of it. Right fingertips reaching up to the ceiling. So reach tall and then start to take this over to the left in a side stretch. Your gaze today is wherever it's comfortable. Looking <laughs> forward, and maybe it feels nice to look down. Maybe it feels better to look up toward the ceiling. Maybe you could play around and explore all three. And then today, when we lift up through center, bringing this top arm, your right hand behind you, it's going to become your second spine. I'll turn to you can see. So it'll find the floor and help to press you a little taller. And then your opposite hand can either find the same knee, that would be the left knee, or reach over toward the right, very deeper to this. So as we're here, we still feel shoulder blades pulling down the back, and that length through the swirly part of the head. And one more breath. A gentle release through center. I'm going to turn to face you again as we come into our second side of the side stretch. So your right fingertips reaching toward the ground will be out of bed, left fingertips toward the ceiling, reaching tall, and then we'll take it over for the side stretch. Again, gaze is wherever is comfortable in your body today. When you're ready, we'll be in the head to the twist. We're reaching back up to your center. This, your top hand again coming behind to be your second spine. And then your opposite hand either staying on the same knee for a little bit of an open twist or reaching across for a bit of a close. Again, still lifting through the swirly part of your head. you're ready, we'll gently release through center, heading into your tabletop from here, coming over top of the feet. So if you'd like, we won't be in tabletop too, too long, but if you would like a blanket or anything underneath the knees, know that that is an option. So we'll do that today. So we set up here with wrists underneath of shoulders, knees underneath of hips, and we begin to move with our breath, coming into cat cows. So on the inhale, dropping the belly, looking forward, lifting the chin. On the exhale, press into your hands and round, belly pulls into spine. So inhale, coming into the arch. I like to bend my elbows and pull them toward my thighs. Just an option to exhale around. Connecting your breath with movement. And 
What I like especially about cat-cow moving with the breath is I can see if my inhale is a little longer or shorter than my exhale. We have a couple of rounds here to so maybe try to even it out. Feel free to stay right here with cat-cow or begin to move in a way that's organic in your body today. If that be, I like to swing the hips, but you might like to bend your elbows or find some barrel rolls. <coughs> Just moving in some way that feels organic. So we're back to this feeling. What sensations are going to feel really good in your body here? And if you have a desire to head into a shape, trust that that's where you need to be and head there. We have a couple more breaths. Making sure to even out if you've done something on one side. Take a couple of moments to even it out on the other. And then we will meet back in a neutral tabletop. Setting up for downward dog in tabletop, bend your elbows out to the sides and then squeeze your elbows towards your thighs. So begin to straighten the arms from here. Hopefully you felt an engagement of the muscles in the upper ribs here. Go ahead and tuck your toes from this space and press up into your downward facing dog. Nice and gentle. Maybe start to move here by bending one knee at a time. Maybe it feels better to stay still. Just do what feels right in your body. If upper body is still, take a moment to think about shoulder blades pulling down the back towards your back pockets. It's really pulling shoulders into socket. From here, we're going to gently lower down to a wide knee tabletop. Bring your big toes together and sit back into a child's pose. So you got one heels, your arms might reach forward, maybe forehead finds the mat. Any other variation that you'd like to play with, maybe your hands come back by the feet if that's feeling really better for you right now. Maybe this could be a little closer or a little wider. And breathe for a moment. And when you're ready, nice and slow, we're going to transition with the breath between these movements. On an inhale, come into your tabletop. Exhale into downward facing dog. Inhale to wide knee tabletop and exhale into child's pose. Inhale tabletop and downward facing dog. Your breath, you know where we're headed. The inhale takes you into the tabletop. The exhale into a child's pose this time. Let's come back into the tabletop on the inhale. Downward facing dog and we'll hold this downward facing dog. From here, gently start to walk your feet towards your hands. We take whatever bend in the knees feels really good in the body until we wind up in a forward fold. I'm gonna set my blanket to the side for now. Create some space behind me. And here is a great place to grab your blocks or your home props to bring the floor up to you. Sometimes it feels nice just to have this connection of your hands to something, the floor or props. And then stay here in this forward fold. You can sway, you can move. Maybe you want to disconnect from the floor or props and grab an elbow in each hand. Again, where are you today and what feels good today? One more breath. If 
If your arms are bound, release your arms. On an inhale, straighten the legs and touch your legs somewhere, lengthen through the spine, through that swirly part of your head. Exhale, fold. We'll do two more of those. Inhale, lengthen through spine, straighten legs, touch legs somewhere. And exhale, fold. One more, inhale, lengthen. And exhale, fold. Standing this time, press through the heels and inhale, arms above your head. You can swan dive up, I'm reaching through center because of the wall, and then we exhale to heart center. And pause for a moment here in mountain pose. I'm just going to face you for a moment. So as we stand here, you let your eyes close. Maybe you place your hands back on your heart. Just take a moment to check back in. Maybe come back into your heart space. Noticing any sensations, maybe specifically in that area or anywhere in the body to bring you back to this present moment. Gently letting eyes flutter open. We'll begin setting up for some slow classical salutations. So we're back at the top of the mat. On an inhale, reach your arms above your head. On your exhale, bend through the knees and fold forward. Another great place for your props. Hands either find the floor or your props. And we're going to lunge the right leg back. Pause there. So here are some options. I can stay right here. We could stay right here. We could lower the back knee. We could leave hands on the floor connected to props, or they might reach overhead depending on how we're feeling right here. Take a moment to settle into the shape. When you're ready, bring your hands to the ground from here and start to lift the hips really high. So we have space to step the left foot back into a downward facing dog. On an inhale, roll this out into a plank. Option to come down to knees, I will take that option today. And then we'll lower all the way to the mat. So you might let the hips come down first, really protecting the shoulders. And then lifting it up into a cobra. Hands by your chest, lifting through that swirly part of the front of your head. We gently lower. Press back through a tabletop into downward facing dog and pause there. Feel free to move in downward dog. Stay still. You might take a moment to think about lengthening through the swirly part of your hair. So in the classical salutation, there is not a three point. So we're thinking about the right knee pulling through almost like cheetah, creating some space between the hands. Sometimes I need to shift weight over into my left hand to create space to step my right foot between. No, that could be one big lunge or a couple of steps forward. And then the same here, it could be one lunge during the left foot in or a couple of steps forward and come back into my forward fold. Inhale, lengthen spine. Exhale, fold. Standing on this inhale, arms above your head. And exhale, your hands to heart center. Second side, inhaling arms up. Exhale, bend your knees and fold forward. If you want to find your props, it's a great option here. This time we lunge the left leg back and we pause in this shape. So setting up in whatever variations feels really nice on this side. Lunge, maybe you lower the back knee. Hands could stay connected again to her or to props or reach overhead. And breathe. How does this feel in your body? And when you're ready, we bring hands.
hands to the mat, semi props to the side. If your knee is down, we tuck the back toes to lift the knee and hips, lift the hips high so we can step back to downward facing dog. I'm going to give you the option to flow here, coming into plank and taking it from there if you're familiar. If not, stay right here with me in downward facing dog. And we'll all be here. Taking a moment if you're in down dog to pull shoulder blades down the back to settle into the shape. And then when you're ready, it's going to be the left knee pulling forward into almost a chia. Creating space to step your foot between your hands. And again, we have the same option of one big lunge with the right foot forward or a couple of steps to get right foot to meet left. Let's find length in between. Inhale. And exhale, fold. Inhale, arms above your head. And exhale, your hands to heart center. Setting up your chair. Begin to sit back here, bringing arms up. So again, we think about this length of the swirling part of our head. As our hips sit back, weight comes into heels. Shoulder blades are pulling down the back, and maybe I'm turning for a second. Pinkies turn in towards each other. Try in this shape to separate the mat between your feet. So you're trying to take your feet open, trying to rip the mat down the middle, engaging the glutes and sinking a little deeper for two. And one really nice fold forward. Inhale, find some length. This time we'll place hands on the mat and step back to a plank. Again, I'll leave you with the option here to flow or stay with me and press back to a downward facing dog. From this space, inhale into a wide knee tabletop and press back into a child's pose for a few moments, letting what we've done so far settle in. And know if child's pose isn't feeling right for you today, you have a number of other options staying in down dog. I like to come to a seat, thinking about a tall spine, maybe grab a drink. We'll take two more breaths here. Before we begin moving again, pause for a moment and again, notice sensations within. Are you feeling anything new? And when you are ready, we'll meet back in downward facing dog. So you might come up to a tabletop on your inhale and press back to downward facing dog on your exhale. We're going to start this next sequence on the left leg. Coming into warrior one. So stepping your left foot between your hands and warrior one, your back foot pivots down. And we think about space for the hips. So if you need to heel toe the left foot to the left a bit to create space for hips to face forward, please do that. We get a sturdy base at the bottom and then when you're ready, reaching arms overhead. Take a moment to feel the outer edge of your back foot foot lengthening into the ground, shoulder blades pulling down the back, maybe pinkies come towards each other. And then we're going to open our arms up like a T. I'm kind of a little stuck with the window, but we open arms up like a T. And then from here, taking right arm underneath of the left. So I'm going to turn to you for a second so you can see the option here is to wrap arms like a big hug or take arms into eagle by bringing hands together. Either way, feel shoulder blades pulling down the back, a little lift of the breastbone, maybe a lift of the chin. Breathe and hold. And 
You might think about opposition here as energy going down the legs, grounding us. Maybe a little lift of the breast going. And when you're ready, as we begin to release the arms, we start to fold on the inside of the left leg, coming into humble warrior. And here are your options. Taking hands from the sacrum. If you have a space, so go ahead and clasp and extend fingers toward the ceiling. So options, hands on sacrum, they can always come toward the ground too for a little more stability. Or maybe they clasp and extend toward the ceiling. You might think about tucking the chin here. You might think about lengthening down the back leg. Two more breaths. Hands are bound, release them, and begin to reach them toward the ground. We're going to sweep the ground and come back up into warrior one. When you're ready, open up to warrior two. So that could be an adjustment of the feet, bringing left foot a little toward the right. Then we open up. So in warrior two, we might think about the front heel and the arch of the back foot, or actually any place on the back foot. Shoulder blades pulling down the back, reach through fingertips. This is another space to think about the swirly part of your head, lifting toward the ceiling. Reach low. When you're ready, the front palm's gonna flip toward the ceiling. So transition into reverse, bringing the left palm or left arm overhead, find the side stretch reaching back. Continue to ground down through the feet, lift up through the fingertips and through the swirly part of the head. So a lot happening, a lot of lengthening. One more breath. Slowly coming into your warrior two from here. Begin to straighten your front leg. This is our transition to triangle. Start to shift your hips to the back of the room. Fingertips reaching long toward the front. So reach as far as you can, and then maybe arms start to open up. So over this last year, my triangle has actually gotten a lot smaller, shorter, I guess you could say, because I started to think more about the length through the spine and the extension through the legs. This bottom hand could find the shin, could find one of your props. A little more stability, one more breath. Bend your front knee, come back into your warrior two. From here, we'll windmill the arms down, coming into a runner's lunge. So hands are coming on either side of the front foot. We're up on the ball of the back foot. Option here to lower the back knee. We're transitioning into a twist. So lifting the left fingertips toward the ceiling. Option for one of your props underneath this bottom knee on the right hand. So the bottom knee, when it's down, gives me a little more space to twist. If you're looking for a little more work or a little more balance, you can lift the back knee. Two more breaths. When you're ready, both hands down. Stepping to a forward fold. You're gonna give you one big lunge or a couple of hops to bring your right foot to meet your left. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, fold and hold. So whatever bend in the you need, take it. Option here to bind. You might take your two hook fingers and grab your big toes. Hands can come underneath the feet if that's in your practice. Or you could even take your feet a little wider. And maybe you move with this. Grab an elbow in each hand and swing. Yogi's choice, what feels good? If 
you're feeling some tension around the neck, give your head a shake, yes and no. And then when you're ready, hands might come to the ground as you heel toe feet back towards center if they were separating. On an inhale, find some length, touch your legs. Exhale, fold. We're going to sweep the floor and come back into chair. So hips sit back, heels ground, arms in each other. Other options from our, for arms are to extend them out straight or maybe even bring them into prayer. What feels right in your body today? Hips sit back, quads engage. The space below your belly button, pulling it toward the spine. Finding maybe more of a neutral pelvis. A little deeper for two. And when you're ready, begin to fold forward. Let's find one more length in here. Hands come to the ground and step back to a plank. Again, you have the option to flow or press back to a downward facing dog with me. And then we'll find somewhere to let that side settle in. Whether that's staying right here in downward facing dog, child's pose, if you want to join me, I again like to come onto my knees and sit back on the heels. And just take a moment for the body to process. These times in between movement are so important. Let everything be done incorporate into your body. Doing all this good. And when you feel ready, we'll be back in downward facing dog. So as you find yourself settled in your down dog, once again, we pull shoulder blades down the back toward our back pockets. This time it's gonna be the right foot. It steps between the hands as we come into warrior one. Stepping right foot between hands, the back foot again pivots down. Create space for your hips, maybe by heel toeing the right foot to the right, and then bringing arms overhead. So take a moment to feel your strong base. The front knee tracks second and third toe. The back of the leg, we feel the extension to the outer edge of the back foot. Arms reaching up. And then out to the side like a T. So this time it's going to be left arm underneath a right I'll turn to for a second, either in bear hug or wrapping around for people. Finding the shape that works best for you. Wherever we are, again, shoulder blades pulling down the back, swirly part of our head lifts. And then maybe start to lift the breast go. Maybe the chin lifts. Maybe we find a little opening through the front body. Two more breaths. And as the arms unwind, we'll begin to hover over the front leg. So again, those options, hands on either side of the front foot. We could bring our hands to the sacrum and a little opening for the chest, or if you have the space, interlace fingers and extend toward the ceiling. Humble warrior, maybe with a tucked chin. Or you might be feeling this compression on the inner thigh. Know that that's going to be really healing when we release. Compression good, pain not good though. Feeling any pain come out of the shape work. Two more breaths. Your hands are bound in the way, release them and bring them toward the ground. When you're ready, we'll sweep back up into warrior one. 
Do that slow transition to warrior two. So I like to straighten my front leg and heel toe my right foot over toward the left to get my front heel in line with the back foot somewhere. If I need bend in the front knee. From this shape, arms extend out, shoulder blades pulling down the back, swirly part of the crown of the head lifting toward the ceiling. <coughs> and take a moment maybe to feel really powerful in the shape. <coughs> to feel energy extending out from the heart through the fingers, maybe even from the heart and down through the feet. When you're ready, the front palm flips and we come into the reverse. So here we might really think about the front knee. It kind of wants to come in toward the big toe. Open it maybe a little toward the pinky. as we feel length here in right side body. Coming back into warrior two. Straighten your front leg and here's our transition to triangle. I like to shorten my stance a little for triangle. Hips shift to that room. Fingertips reaching toward the front. Micro bend in the front knee. When you reach this edge, reaching forward. Then maybe arms open up. Again, we have this option of hands, or excuse me, a prop for the back hand, the bottom hand, or maybe onto the shin. And we breathe. Reach through fingertips. Extend through heels. Extend through the swirly part of your head. Bend your front knee to come back into warrior two. Runner lunge, windmilling the arms down on either side of the front foot. Take a moment to allow hips to face the ground. And then you have the option of coming onto the back knee as we twist with right fingertips reaching toward the ceiling. Again, back knee could be down, it could be lifted. Breathe. And when you're ready, both hands coming down. Back knee is lower, we tuck the back toe. We're coming to the forward fold. So again, it could be a couple of hops or one big lunge forward. Inhale, find some length. Fold and we'll hold once again. So we could stay right here in forward fold. Any variation to bind with the toes, with the other feet, or another option that would turn to face you to heel toe, feet out a bit, toes turn out and sink into a malasana. An option here is to just sit on a prop, on a block, or on your house prop. And we can bring hands to heart center. If you're in the squat, sit bones heading toward the ground, swirling front of the ground of our head, lifting long. And think about shifting weight toward the outer edge of the feet and lifting the arches. Two more rounds. If you're in the squat, releasing hands down and we'll meet everyone back in the forward fold. Either way, start to heel toe the feet back towards center. On an inhale, find some length in the spine. On your exhale, fold. Inhale, arms above your head. And exhale, bring your hands to heart center. Pause once again. Maybe your eyes close or gaze relaxes. Maybe hands come over the heart. Just check in. Maybe you notice somewhere in the body that you're holding tension that you can let go of. For me, I can feel it in the jaw. Give me a little shake in the legs, release any tension in the legs. Two more breaths. Mm -hmm. 
when you're ready, we'll release hands to the side. I'm going to mirror you on these balance poses coming into tree. So you ground down through your right heel, lift up through your right arch. Start to bring the left foot in. So our options here for tree, we could stay with the toes attached to the ground, the ball the foot attached to the ground, and heel on the right leg, or bring foot toward the calf, or bring foot toward the inner thigh. So find your option. Hands can come into prayer. I find that this is, uh, helps me to balance a little more, pulling everything in towards center. Once we're here, the standing leg presses into the foot that's lifted, and the foot that's lifted presses into standing leg. Swirly part of the head, you know where it's going up toward the ceiling. Find your gaze, something that's not moving, probably not me. Maybe arms lift. Maybe they start to move, to sway. And when you're ready to release, we'll bring the hands back to heart center. Take a moment to pull knee into the chest wherever you are coming into the store. And then we'll lower the foot down. And shake it up. We can bring it outside. And let it go. Begin setting up for second side when you're ready. It's going to be your left heel grounding down, lifting up through your left arch. Space below your belly button, pulling towards spine, swirly part of head lifting. And then find where your right foot is going to go toward the ankle, toward the calf, or toward your inner thigh. Hands, again, might start in prayer. Maybe you press them together. Foot into leg, leg into foot, and then an option to play around with the arms. Extending up, I like to do, you know, if you want to do the macarena here, not a pose, <laughs> or any sort of flossing. Um, Feel your heel around, lifting up with the arch. Feel this connection to earth, how grounded you are. One more breath. So again, to release wherever our foot goes, we'll lift it knee up and distort. Hands again, come wherever. And then begin to lower down into your mountain pose. You give it a shake. Before we head to the floor, coming up into our victory shape. So we're here, bring hands into a peace sign. This is our victory mudra. Open the chest on an inhale, find space, look up, feel confident. And on your exhale, gently pull forward. Inhale, find some length. Full touch the ground, step back to a plank. If you want to flow, you could flow. I'm going to press back to downward dog if you want to join me here. And then when you're ready, lower down onto your knees and cross your ankle to have a seat. Turn if you can, if you want, wide leg on your mat, or you can stay exactly where you are. Just looking for some space to move a little side to side. We're going to come into some wide knee windshield wipers. So we set up by taking hands behind and bringing feet wide on the floor. Fingertips could face you. They can turn out a, a bit. Just find again what feels right on the wrists and what feels right on the shoulders. You can even turn them to the back. What's right in your body? Lean your weight back a little on the arms and start to run hands. You can start to lower your knees side to side. So we're taking this at your pace. Hang out where you want to hang out. Keep going. I'm going to 
to turn so you can see where I'm going. Next time your knees fall to the right, let them stay there and lift your upper body. So here are your options. Coming into deer pose, if you want to, start to fold directly over the right shin. This is an option. Another option is to take this more at an angle over the right knee. If you're going over the right knee, you can take it into a twist. Left fingertips reaching up and needling underneath. This is, these are options. If you are craving a pigeon today, you could press your hips up, lift them high, adjusting the hips to face the ground and then settling into your pigeon. I can find what's going to work best for you today. I like it here. I can feel a little more compression on the outer thigh, a little more opening, but that's my body. I experienced something completely different. Wherever you are, allow yourself to settle into the shape. See where you can let go. You know your body. If you need more time on this side, please take it. If you're ready to switch, begin to press your upper body tall. If you're in pigeon, go ahead and bend the left knee back. So we'll come into the wide knee windshield wipers again. Hands come behind. We let our hips find the ground and the knees fall side to side. Next time your knees fall to the left, we'll set up for this side and you have all of those same options. We start by sitting tall. We can fold directly over the left shin, the left knee at an angle. If you want to take the twist with the left knee angle, the right arm extends up and we needle underneath the left. Maybe a blanket or a prop underneath your head. You know you have that option to come into the pigeon on this side. I'm taking my body directly over the left shin. This is what feels right for me today. And where can you settle? Where can you just be? Two more breaths. And when you're ready, begin to press yourself tall. Coming back into the wide knee windshield wipers. Last time, I'm going to turn to face you for these last few windshield wipers. Then we will begin setting up for wide leg forward fold seated. So sitting, you can actually sit behind your mat if you wanted to, so that your heels were on your mat. You could sit on the edge of a blanket to lift the hips. We're not here for too terribly long, but you have these options. If you're like me and hamstrings, especially calves today, are tight, you can find a bend in the knees. Knees, toes, though, still face the ceiling. Take hands behind and start here with a little lift of the breastbone toward the ceiling. This might be exactly where you stay. But if your bones are stacked in a way that allow you to come forward and that feels right, you could begin to walk your hands forward. And if you're like me, I like to move a bit in this shape. But you can always stay still and breathe. So 
even though the knees might be bent, continue to think about lengthening through heels. Three more times. Gently begin to press yourself tall. We're going to meet on the back from here. So I need to take hands behind, extend the knees, and adjusting to one side. Maybe you grab a hind of thighs and allow yourself to roll back. We'll meet right here on your back with the knees bent, feet pressing into the floor. And coming into one bridge or one wheel today. So no, you can, if you're coming into bridge, you have the option of supported with a prop underneath the sacrum. Wheel, I'm gonna trust that you know where you're going. Bridge, without a prop, we set up with hands by the sides, start to press into the heels to lift the hips. Option from here to think about reaching hands toward the ankles or maybe your hands clasp, and you start to squeeze shoulder blades underneath. If knees feel like they're opening up to the side, engage your inner thigh, pulling knees towards center of it as you press into heels. Maybe even think about pulling heels towards your body, a little more engagement of the hamstring. Five more breaths. Whenever this feels complete for you, your hands are clasped, release, roll down one vertebrae at a time. And then resist the urge, if you can, to pull knees into the chest, but either a windshield wiper the legs or bring your feet together for a butterfly. And allow this to settle into our backs, our spines, the last shape we were in. And when you're ready, bring knees back together. If you want to use your hands to help guide legs together. Pulling knees into your chest. Leaving right knee in the chest. Extend your left leg long on the floor, reaching through the heel. You might take a couple of circles through the right hip. When that feels complete, coming into a twist, taking your right knee across your body. You might extend the right arm out, make goal post. Route like T. And then find where it's comfortable for your gaze. I actually like to look at the knee. It feels better on my neck. But you could look toward the ceiling or toward the hand that's extended. Bring the knee, the body back to center, knee into chest. Pull left knee up to join, a nice hug of both knees, and then extending right leg long. You might take a couple of circles through the left hip. And then when you're ready, you can come into a twist. So I like to adjust my hips a little to the left as I take my knee over. Left arm extends out, maybe T or goal post, and find your gaze. And 
when you feel ready, bringing your body back to center, adjusting hips back to center, both knees into the chest. And we'll close out our physical practice today with an inversion. I'm going to recommend a dead bug pose, but if you know of another inversion that you're craving, please take it. And dead bug, both our legs and our hands extend up toward the ceiling. Feeling length through heels, through fingertips. Feel free to have a bend in the knees. Knowing how healing inversions are for our legs, our feet, reducing inflammation. Also a little helpful boost for the heart. Another 30 seconds. to release out of your inversion. Taking any additional movements your body needs this morning, when you feel ready, begin to set up for your rest. So no, that could be right here on your back, knees bent or long, or you could roll onto your side. You could roll onto your belly. You can come to a seat. Find a shape where you can really let go let it all settle in. This morning we'll be here in just a few minutes. A little quiet time here in Shavasana. to deepen your breath. Begin to bring your awareness back to your heart center. Enter the bowl of vastness that is the heart. Listen to the song that is always resonating. Give yourself to it with total abandon. Quiet ecstasy is here and a steady regal sense of resting in a perfect spot. You who are the embodiment of blessing, once you know the way, the nature of attention will call you to return. Again and again, answer that call and be saturated with knowing I belong here. I am at home. 
Start to bring some gentle movements, maybe a wiggle of fingers and toes. Maybe a circle of wrists and ankles. And eventually including the whole body. Maybe that's reaching arms overhead, extending through heels. And then gentle roll to one side, finding a fetal position. And then pressing yourself up to a seat. Coming back to the heart, maybe you bring the right hand back to the breastbone, left hand on top. Pausing this morning to honor your heart. honor your heart's intentions, to honor your heart's desires. And take a moment to honor those around us and their hearts. Maybe take a moment to honor those in the front lines of this virus. taking a moment to honor the teachers who came before us, who gave us tools to share and to experience. And a moment to honor the practice. And I thank you guys so much. I will bow, I honor you. Namaste. So if you want, I'm going to turn the video off here in just a moment, but I'm going to hang out. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat, or I think you can even raise your hand if you want to come onto the video. Thank you guys so much. Oh. But it stayed recording. Oh, oh maybe not.